So this is a little single cylinder pop-up valve engine that I've been working on. Uh, it's not quite complete, but I thought I'd just take you through the assembly process for it and just, just show you around the parts. So, uh, crankcase, just the bottom of the crankcase, uh, with some studs in for mounting the cylinder on. I've got the cylinder uh, itself with a cooling fins, uh, air-cooled engine, and then a steel liner. Still some washers sat on there. Take them off. Um, we have crankshaft and the big bearing, main bearing on there still. I've left that in place. Front of the crankcase, and then with a, a sealed bearing in there. Uh, this is the uh, timing cover that fits on the front there, and we'll see that go on in a second. Here's the timing gear uh, camshaft itself. So this, there's no cam profile on here yet, but the cam profile will be mounted, will be uh, ground into this part at the front here. And then this timing gear camshaft runs at half crank speed with that simple 2 to 1 ratio. Here's the head. Now all the body and all of the main parts and the crankcase of the engine are all aluminium. The head is actually steel. Uh, it's just basically the, the size of it and the difficulty in machining it is much easier to machine out steel than put all of the inserts in. But steel, two valves, uh, a spark plug, and here's a spark plug. Actually that's one part I've not made, it's a bought part, it's about the only part in here. The spark plug and the bearings and the, and the bolts the only thing I've, I've, things I've bought. We have a flywheel here. I might change the flywheel, but at the moment it's a steel flywheel with a, a knurled edge so that you can start the engine. And that's that's oh, and the piston, of course. We missed the piston and uh, comrod and the gudgeon pin all assembled there. I'm not going to take that part here, but you can just see the uh, steel piston, uh, aluminium comrod, and fossil rods bush. Steel and steel for small engines runs really well, and that's one of the things that I've, uh, if you go back to uh, E.T. Westbury's famous engines of the 1930s and 20s and 30s, um, you know, some of the best running engines, they run with cast iron and cast iron, and cast iron and cast iron or steel and steel is, is, is a brilliant combination to run. So let's just reassemble it. So, so let's put the crankshaft in. Crankshaft goes in, pushes home with the bearing. You can see out the front sticks the uh, so it went in, but it actually fell back out again. So let's push that home. Then we put the front of the actual. Uh, no, what we do first is, gosh, I'm forgetting this. Is we actually put the, the uh, camshaft in, and the bolt for the camshaft is also the main bearing for it as well. That, uh, that's what that's the shaft it sits on. So that little fossil bronze bearing in the centre of the cam goes over this bolt so this cap head bolt will be machined down to also be the shaft and that locates I'll just undo that slightly that will then locate in the cover <laughs> gosh I'm forgetting the build of this it's quite difficult to build this engine I forgot how bad it is so I have to get that into there and then that in on there so the cover and the camshaft all go in as one. That's a nice, that's not a not an engine for mass production. Um, so that goes in there. Right, so now I have a working, and you can see that there's the camshaft, it just sticks through, and that will line up with the crank. So that goes on to there, and we just push that home there, that's it. And then five very small, again, domed cap head bolts. Just locate the front of that crankcase. I'm just going to put two in for the moment. Do them up. They're in. We then have to get this piston and comrod on which fits on the main bearing there and then we can put the crankcase over the top now there should be a mark I, I have to mark so that that little dimple there will line up with a dimple there on the cylinder so there's a, there's a little marker put on 
to make sure when you line this all up you put it in one way around that will then go on so there you are we've got that on we can then put on the washers oh, they take a little bit of a dexterity i'll probably need a pair of tweezers for them so let's use a pair of tweezers put the washers on so washer on then a nut on the top again they need a little bit of work to get them going to get them on just carefully balancing it and putting it on bit tricky yeah might be doing these later off camera <laughs> so there's the there's the nuts go on to hold the cylinder down. We can do them all up in a minute. The flywheel goes on and that's quite tight onto there and then we put the nut on the front of that. Nut onto the crank. I'm only gonna just turn that just tighten that up loosely. I'm not gonna tighten that up fully. I'm just gonna have to hold that against me. But yeah, so that's tight enough. The head at the moment is not bolted, but the head will go on there. As I said, the I'm sorry, the, the, the out of the cam here, there will be a push rod that comes up to a valve that then will sorry a rocker arm that then the rocker arm will actuate the valve, and the valve will have a spring on the top there. And then that valve, the exhaust valve, will be actuated. Only exhaust valve actuated the inlet valve will operate under depression from the engine on its own so this will be the exhaust valve operating the exhaust will come out here and then spin around the back of the engine the carburetor will fit on this side and then the spark plug goes in here so at the side of the engine now so not complete but now you have a little engine that's getting there and you can see the scale of it this little engine is only four point 3cc, 17mm bore, 19mm stroke. So a tiny single cylinder four stroke. 